Hello, hello. I hope you're all having a great week. Most of my project ideas start with a sketch and this week is no different. Once I was happy with my sketch, I transferred its outline onto a piece of watercolor paper and then I started my painting process. The watercolor paper I'm working on measures 11 inches by 15 inches. And you'll notice that on the upper left hand corner I drew a circle because I want to include a moon in my portrait. Once my lightest layer of color is dry I start to work on shading. Shading is a layering process that happens in multiple stages. Since watercolors dry lighter than they are when they are first applied, it's always good to wait until a layer is dry to see if you're satisfied with your shades. While I let this first layer of color on my portrait dry, I'm going to start working on my night sky. This is a relatively big area of paper to cover and usually I would prefer to work with a bigger brush. But since I have other details that I need to be more careful about in um, the foreground, I'm working with a smaller brush and I'm trying to work as quickly as possible to make sure that the paint stays wet when I go uh, from area to area so that they blend better together. As you can see, the first layer of color in my night sky dried pretty light, so I'm going to start to add more intense color to start darkening it up. But I'll have to probably keep adding um, different layers of paint to make sure it gets dark enough. Because as I mentioned before, watercolors dry lighter than they are when they're first applied. So sometimes you need more than one layer to get the color you desire. As I let my background dry, I'll continue to work on shading. You'll notice that when I'm painting a portrait, I tend to move around a lot. This is because I'm trying to let the different layers of paint dry before I touch them again. Working with watercolors is a lot about understanding how water will affect both your paper and your paint. Not all watercolor papers are created equally and the same goes for the watercolor paints. Some watercolor paper will absorb water very quickly and dry very quickly. I think it's a good practice to try experimenting with different watercolor papers to see which types of paper work best for you and which types of paper you prefer to work with. The same goes for watercolor paints as they come in different formats. I find that the less expensive watercolor pen sets that you can buy tend to be grainier and the colors don't seem to be as pigmented as more expensive watercolors. But you don't really need to spend a whole lot of money on watercolors. This little set here that I'm painting with right now for instance is not all that expensive and I find that there's a good variety of colors in it and I really also love the texture of the colors. They're very creamy, they have good color intensity and they apply very easily and are easy to work with. The best thing I can recommend when it comes to watercolor paints is to just again experiment and see what you prefer. To start working on the interior of my moon, I'm starting to add some very light washes of a similar color to the one I added in my sky. While these light splashes of paint are still wet, I add some grains of salt to add some texture to the moon. After sprinkling some salt on the moon area, I add a little bit more paint to that same area and when it dries, it's going to create these little pockets and, and craters in the moon that will give it a little bit more of a realistic effect. This area will need to dry completely before I can remove the salt.
So while the moon dries, I'll start to work on my portrait's hair. Before working on this section, it was of course very important for me to make sure that the feathers in my young lady's hair were completely dry. Otherwise, the black paint I'm adding would have bled into the feathers. Here I'm using a clean brush and some water to blur out the lines in the feathers a little bit just to soften them up. I've decided to paint the beads attached to the feathers red, orange and yellow. These colors to me are reminiscent of sunset colors. At this point in my process, I'm pretty much done with working with watercolors and I'm starting to use water soluble markers to continue my process. I like working with water soluble markers because they're blendable and they're easier to blend into other colors. In areas I know I won't need to blend, I work with waterproof markers. I usually add black ink details in sections like the mouth and the eyes, and then I'll use white ink for highlights around the eyes and on different areas of the face. Once watercolors are dry, it's easy to work over them with other mediums. I often work with a variety of different tools to complete my paintings. Here I'm using a paint pen, and sometimes I'll use regular crayons, wax crayons, and a variety of different pens that will help me add a little pop of color, or highlights, um, or just little details that will make my painting come to life. The moon is now completely dry so I'll use my fingers to rub the salt off the surface. Once I had completely removed the salt from my surface, I drew a silhouette of an eagle flying in the moonlight and I started to color it in. My full moon night sky wouldn't be complete without some stars, so I used some white ink to start drawing them in. After I finished adding my stars to the sky, I was ready to remove the tape around the surface of my painting, and it was complete. I really love how my painting turned out. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed creating it. Thanks again so much for making the time to watch. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!